Just from those opening shots, you can tell that this is going to be incredible. In my last video, I was in Homer, and now I've changed locations to another town on the Kenai Peninsula, Seward. I promise I shot this in color, but it certainly looks like black and white after three days of rain and fog. Still, Seward is amazing. From this great downtown to the phenomenal Alaska Sea Life Center to an epic cruise through the Kenai Fjords National Park. From the moment we set up camp in a municipal site less than 100 yards from the water of Resurrection Bay, it rained. With the exception of the morning that we left, we dealt with wet conditions for most, if not all, of each day. I visited Seward with my niece Heather and her husband Jeff. They are in Alaska for the entire summer as part of their year-long RV trip around the country. We were determined not to let the weather ruin our time on the Kenai Peninsula. And we got the authentic Alaskan experience complete with the rain. The Seward downtown was just a short distance from the campsite. There were plenty of shops, restaurants, and older buildings to walk amongst and step inside. Of course, we discovered and patronized the two local breweries, Seward Brewing Company and the Stony Creek Brew House. I really enjoyed getting coffee every day at the Resurrect Art Coffee House. It was located a few blocks from the waterfront in an old building that once served as a church. In addition to warm and tasty coffee, the place offered good stuff from the attached Bell Tower Bakery. I also wandered into the Sea Bean Cafe one morning. Good coffee and friendly smiles all around in this place too. Downtown Seward gave us everything that we wanted. Really loved Seward a lot. Uh, enjoyed Homer certainly, but I think I enjoyed Seward even more than Homer. It's all together so that you can, and even from the campgrounds and stuff, you can walk anywhere you want to go, any restaurants, any coffee shops, shops, all that. It's great. It's all kind of in one central area, so it makes it a lot easier to walk around and, and see all the different places. Finally, on the morning we were leaving, the rain stopped and the clouds lifted. We were able to see more fully the spectacular beauty that surrounded us and our campsite. This is an awesome campsite. It's right on the water's edge. Uh, it's surrounded by mountains. It is spectacular. I mean, everywhere you look, there's mountains. You can see glaciers off in the distance. If the weather had cooperated, I think it would have been like epic. It would have been as good as it gets. You can see how close we were to the water. On the first night, each of us received an emergency notification on our phones. We all independently scrambled to stop the noise. None of us noticed the reason for the alert, a tsunami warning. A 7.2 magnitude earthquake far south of us triggered the warning for much of the Kenai Peninsula. The alert read, and I quote, you are in danger, get away from coastal waters, move to higher ground or inland now. It turned out fine, but we all learned a lesson about reading emergency alerts before deleting them. We woke the next morning and embarked on our greatest adventure in Seward. Thank you. This is Kenai Fjords National Park. It's been an absolutely gorgeous day because we've been out on our boat for about seven hours now. We are on Fox Island at this time, but we've been out on the water. We've seen glaciers. We got a really up close look at a waterfall and we've seen dolls, porpoises, and even humpback whales. Stay tuned, it's all coming right now. We booked our adventure with Kenai Fjords Tours. Howdy. The Glacier Explorer was the vessel from which we would explore Kenai Fjords National Park. Much of our time was spent on Resurrection Bay. The crew was always on the lookout for wildlife. We got pretty close to a pot of doll's porpoises. Doll's porpoises are swift in the water, able to reach speeds of 34 miles per hour. They frolicked alongside the boat for several minutes. They're on both sides. At a much farther distance, we saw a pot of humpback whales, and later, a particularly active single whale of the species. My camera is much better when the action is close, so the humpback encounter doesn't appear to be as impressive as it was in person. Kenai Fjords National Park covers more than 600,000 acres. The majority of that is remote and far from being able to reach easily. A tour such as this one is one of the best ways to experience the park. Even then, you are just able to see a minuscule amount of what is protected by the park. The boats are great, but conditions can sometimes be rough. On our cruise, seas were running about six feet. That was enough to hinder movement at times and make the journey a bit miserable for some. 
Kenai Fjords is home to the Harding Ice Field, the largest contained entirely within the U.S. It spawns 40 glaciers, and on our tour, we got to see a couple of them. So what you see behind me is Holgate Glacier. You might not believe it, but they say that it's about a half mile wide at its base where it reaches the water. Pretty spectacular. We're really close though. The rain is falling, but who cares? We spent a good 30 minutes sitting in the water a short distance from the glacier. This is absolutely the most spectacular thing we've seen on our one year trip. Look at it, it's huge and we've seen it calving and you can see the blue and you know, the weather is terrible, but it doesn't matter. It is awesome. At one point, I was almost alone on deck when the glacier calved and a deep rumble arrived at the boat a few seconds later. Again, much more impressive than what the camera could capture. Oh, that is a sound. That is nature maybe <laughs> talking to us. I, that is the glacier saying hi. Crew members fished out some chunks of the glacier from the water and passed them around to passengers. Heather took the opportunity to hold one of those pieces. The clarity of the ice was a surprise. It is super clear. I mean, you can see right through it. I was quite thankful as a Kenai Fjords Tours employee stayed outside with me in the rain and gave me information about this spot. This is Holgate Arm and we're here at Holgate Glacier as well as Surprise Glacier on the Glacier Explorer. She's out here almost every day and says it never gets old. This is my second season here and so I see this every day and it's a beautiful sight. It looks different every day, different lighting, different wildlife sighting and it's always beautiful to see. She even had an explanation for the blue tint that is present in every glacier and serves as one of the most astonishing features of seeing one. It's all of the density as the ice field is pushing forward and compacting that ice. The light colors can't fall out. The only color that can escape is blue. This is certainly a highlight of any trip to Alaska. I've heard a lot of people who come in on cruises and they say that here in Kenai Fjords and at the glacier is the best stop. Getting into an environment such as this can be inspirational. It can foster a greater appreciation for nature. It can put into perspective your place in the world. It's incredible to see this and it's humbling to see how small we are in comparison to these magnificent creatures and creations here. There was a special moment on board the boat that was extremely cool. A guy proposed and the girl said yes. In celebration, the boat captain maneuvered the Glacier Explorer directly under one of the waterfalls that was pouring glacial melt into the bay. Inch by inch, the boat got closer until one of the crew members captured some of the water in a cup that was attached to a pole. That water was then used to mix a drink for the couple who had just gotten engaged. The final stop of the tour was at Fox Island. A buffet was included as part of the excursion and everyone was able to reflect on the day and what they had seen. I'm from Alaska, he's from, he's from Texas. I'm from Texas. And okay. so, um, it's something very exciting, totally yeah. different. Kenai Fjords Tours offers a number of different trips. The one that we took was the eight and a half hour national park tour and it cost $212 per person. That cruise could have been enough excitement for one place, but there was much more. We spent the following morning at the Alaska Sea Life Center. There were tons of informational displays and animals that are native to the Kenai Peninsula were also part of the experience. My favorite was Pilot, a male stellar sea lion. He was very active and very vocal. Feeding time was a treat for everyone. Pilot performed what seemed to be tricks in order to get his food. In reality, those movements are designed to give the staff a daily check of his condition. Still, the display made everyone a fan of the big guy. Speaking of big, Pilot reached his maximum seasonal weight back in May, coming in at 2,196 pounds. You could really get a better idea about his size as he swam through the enclosure and regularly brushed against the viewing glass. That is one massive animal. There were plenty of other animals at the Alaska Sea Life Center. They run a rescue operation here for seals, sea lions, seabirds, and more. Staff members were tossing ice cubes to some of the seals at one point. Those seals seemed quite pleased with that interaction. I was surprised at how close we were able to get to some of the seabirds in their enclosure. It was fun seeing the staff handle squabbles between some of the birds as well. 
As always, puffins were among the most popular birds with their unique look and mannerisms. I'd give the Sea Life Center high marks. Tickets vary based on time and date, but are around $30 per person. To wrap up our visit to Seward, we visited a couple of other glaciers. Just a short drive from Seward is Exit Glacier. We made the trip and hiked the Glacier Overlook Trail. It's a short and easy walk of just about a mile. It was not a very long hike and it was, yeah, there was some, some uphill, but it wasn't very strenuous. And the first half mile of its paves. There is the Harding Icefield Trail, which is an eight mile, much more strenuous hike that provides a much closer connection to the glacier. It was, however, closed the day that we visited. One striking aspect of visiting Exit Glacier is the signs that begin even on the drive to the Overlook Trail. Those show where the glacier reached on the year that is on the sign. The retreat has been continuous and in recent years, rapid. It's still an impressive feature on the landscape and the glacier and its associated outwash plain are among the most easily accessible in the entire Kenai Fjords National Park. Again, the weather was not ideal, but we got out there. It was yeah. gorgeous. Even in the rain, it was awesome. The other glacier we visited was Byron Glacier. We did that hike on the day we left Seward. It's actually close to Whittier. You can see more about that site in my previous video, Incredible First Impression of Alaska. I cannot recommend a visit to Seward more. There were three nights in Homer, then three nights in Seward. Even with perfect weather in Homer and nearly full-time rain here in Seward, present conditions notwithstanding, I prefer this place. I hope you've enjoyed my content from Alaska's Kenai Peninsula. I can't thank my niece Heather and her husband Jeff enough for letting me hang out with them. This time, I've been old and far from home, but certainly not alone. See you next time. Make sure you check out Heather and Jeff's YouTube channel. It's Alaskan Ram Travel Adventures. They also have a blog chronicling their year-long RV trip at alaskanramtraveladventures.com.